Welcome back. Topic four. Crossflow heat exchanger from chapter 11. A. Definition of heat exchanger. Heat exchanger is an industrial device that is widely used in power generation and heat, heating cooling system. This device involves heat exchange between two fluids separated by a solid surface. If the two fluids run in the same direction, it is parallel flow heat exchanger. If the two fluids run in the opposite direction, it is a counterflow heat exchanger. If the two fluids run in the direction per perpendicular to each other, it is a cross flow heat exchanger. Cross flow heat exchanger is our focus because it has combined internal flow convection and external flow convection. Since heat exchanger deals with a series of resistant mediums such as internal fluid, tube wall, and external fluid, the overall heat transfer coefficient U is introduced to access how good or bad the heat is conducted through over those resistant mediums. The overall heat transfer coefficient U is defined in equation 13. But the question is how you can relate to those resistance mediums. B. Overall heat transfer coefficient equation. This is our cross flow system with internal flow going through the tube and external flow across the tube. The heat of flow Q is from internal fluid to external fluid. We're looking for the equation for UA. Step two, identify all the heat transfer mode. There's a convection between internal flow and inner tube surface, conduction within the tube wall, and convection between external flow and outer tube surface. Next, we can draw the thermal circuit with heat flow and corresponding thermal resistance. Step three, come up with our equation for UA. Since these three thermal resistance are in series, the total thermal resistance is the summation of these three. Next, we plug RT total into the definition for UA, then I get the equation for UA. Please note, in the equation, H1, H2, and U are averaged variables. C, T the equation for heat rate Q. Again, this is our cross flow system, internal flow, external flow, heat flow. This is the diagram that shows how the flow temperature Tmx changes exponentially over the tube lengths. This straight line represents the constant incoming flow temperature T infinity. Equation 14 defines the heat rate between internal fluid and external fluid. It relates the heat rate Q to over a heat transfer coefficient, the area A, and the log mean temperature difference, which is defined in equation 15. 
square. That a TO is the temperature difference between a T infinity and a TMO. That a TI is the temperature difference between a T infinity and a TMI. If you're interested in flow temperature at the tube outlet, TMO, equation 16, relates TMO to TMI, T infinity over a heat transfer coefficient U, area A, mass flow rate M dot, and a specific heat Cp. Finally, if you want to get over a heat transfer coefficient U value, equation 17 relates U bar to A1 RT total or A2 RT total. It depends upon whether the area is specified as inner tube surface area A1 or outer sur tube surface area A2. D. Example 8-5. Multiple heat transfer mode problem. A steady heat rate is through a thick tube wall with one fluid having heat transfer coefficient H1 entering the tube at flow temperature TMI and leaving the tube at flow temperature TMO and the other fluid having heat transfer coefficient H2 crossing the tube at a temperature T infinity. The tube has lengths of L, inner radius R1, and outer radius R2. The wall thermal conductivity is K wall. We need to find the overall heat transfer coefficient U time area A and the heat loss Q. Step one, this is what we know and what we're looking for. Step two, identify all the heat transfer mode. This is the cut view of the tube system. There's convection between internal flow and inner tube surface, conduction within the cylindrical wall and convection between outer tube surface and external flow. Next, we can draw the thermal circuit with the heat flow and corresponding thermal resistance. Step three, select the equation or come up with our own equation for unknowns. At this point, we don't know which way to go. Therefore, let's go back and check our problem one more time. One, the thermal boundary condition for this problem is constant incoming flow temperature T infinity, and we're looking for the heat rate Q from hot fluid to the cold fluid. It is very similar to the cross flow heat exchanger. Therefore, two, we select equation 13 for UA and equation 14 for heat rate Q. This is the equation 13 and equation 14. Step four, plug into numbers. For UA, we plug into numbers for convection thermal resistance, H1 bar pi D1L for conduction thermal resistance, natural log R2 over R1, 2 pi KL. And for convection thermal resistance, H2 bar pi D2L to yield the UA value. For Q, we plug into the UA value and 
the log mean temperature difference to yield the heat loss Q from hot fluid to the cold fluid. Equation 15 is used to calculate the log mean temperature difference where that TO is the temperature difference between a TMO and T infinity, that a TI is the temperature difference between TMI and a T infinity. For temperature difference, you can use either the Celsius or the Kelvin. Please note that log mean temperature difference is different from the temperature difference at the inlet or at the outlet. At this point, we covered topic four. We revisited the overall heat transfer coefficient and introduced the new heat equations for cross-flow heat exchanger. We focused upon the challenge, how to select equation or come up with your own equation for announce. We will do a bonus example. E, example 8-6, how to come up with your own equation for unknown. Water with mass flow rate M dot enters the circular tube at flow temperature TMI and leaves the tube at flow temperature TMO. The tube has lengths of L, which is unknown, inner diameter D1, and outer diameter D2. The tube outer surface is well insulated, and the electrical heating within the wall provides a uniform energy generation rate, Q dot, or Q triple prime. There's convection between the solid surface and moving fluid. We're looking for A, the heat flux uniformly distributed on the tube inner surface. B, the inside surface temperature TSO at outlet, assume the heat transfer coefficient HO is given. See how long is the tube? This is the water property. Step one, this is what we know and what we're looking for. Step two, it is confirmed there's internal flow convection and electrical heating that provides the energy generation within the wall. Therefore, the heat rate can be calculated from Q equals Q triple prime, triple prime times the volume of the wall. Step three, select equation or come up with your own equation for announce. We don't know yet. One, since the tube links L is not given, let's assume it is a long tube. Two, the thermal boundary condition for this problem is constant heat flux at inner tube surface and adiabatic at outer tube surface. Three, the heat flux is provided by electrical heating and it can be calculated from the heat flux equation. If we can put heat flux equation and heat rate equation together in equation A, then 
plug into volume V and inner tube surface area A. Next, plug into number. Cancel out L to yield the heat flux value. Four, find the inner tube surface temperature TSO at the outlet. After going through the heat equation selection process, as shown in the previous example, 8-2, the selected equation is B, since we know the heat flux, heat transfer coefficient, and flow temperature TMO, solve for TSO. 5. Find the tube length. Since there is no explicit equation available to calculate L, let's go back to the 16 heat equations. We start with equation C because it is valid all the time. Then plug into numbers to yield the convection heat value. Next, we try equation D because we know the heat flux and that the area contains the unknown L. Then we plug into numbers QS pi DL. Next, we can make equation C and equation D equal to yield this equation, then solve for L. Six, we need to verify the assumption of being a long tube, whether it is true or not. Equation E, define Reynolds number, then we plug into m dot pi d mu to yield the flow Reynolds number, then compare with criti critical Reynolds number, it is determined the flow is laminar. Next, we compare L over D with a combination of parameters. It is determined the flow, uh, the tube is long. At this point, we finish chapter 8 and 11. This is a beautiful summary and the outcomes on concepts, variables, scales, and equations. This is the collection of over 16 heat equations for internal flow convection. This ends chapter 8 and 11.